All righty, all righty. Good morning, everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also chiropractic physician at Gatesway Health. Today, I'm talking about mood disorders and gluten. Last week, Kathy and I talked about gluten as it relates to a number of different issues, and she won't be with me today. But I did want to kind of cover this topic a little bit. We alluded to it last week. But many of you have questions about gluten. There's so much information about gluten. Things have changed dramatically in my, I guess I've been in practice 10 years or coming up on 10 years. And when I first got into practice, I even remember when I was in school, I had a, a close friend who said, you know, you really should look at going off of gluten. And even though I tried, <clears throat> Uh, I was unsuccessful and I really didn't understand why I needed to go off of gluten. And as the years have gone on, that understanding has grown. And I think it's something that's important for us to all know. 100 million Americans went gluten free in 2014, which was a big statistic. And because of that, you're seeing a lot of pushback in the media against gluten free diets and why a gluten free diet is unsafe and why it's unhealthy and why you shouldn't eat one, or you shouldn't eat a diet that's free of gluten. So yes, it is true that our diets are supplemented with vitamins and minerals and a lot of gluten-rich foods like cereal grains, which can be beneficial if somebody's malnourished. However, most of you are not malnourished, and we have this growing epidemic of problems in our society from prediabetes to diabetes to weight gain to inflammatory disorders to autoimmune problems. And gluten does have a relationship directly or indirectly to so many of those. Now, in talking about mood disorders, people who have depression or anxiety, or if we take it farther out in terms of schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, there is a lot of evidence associating these disorders with gluten problems. And in fact, I read an article this morning and it was the first account of gluten being associated with psychiatric issues. It was written in 1956, and it was written by a general practitioner, and it was titled Bread and Tears. Let me see if I can bring it up. Bread and Tears, Naughtiness, Depression, and Fits Due to Wheat Sensitivity. Pretty interesting. And so in this article, this doctor was talking about 40 kids he saw who he felt were pre-celiac disease and their behavioral disturbance was preceding the celiac disease. At least that's what he thought. We even talked last week about bread madness that was discussed in the psychiatric facilities way back when. I think that even dates back to the 50s where they noticed when they fed the patients gluten contain containing food, sorry for jiggling the camera, foods containing high amounts of gluten, that their behavior became worse. So fast forward to 2019, I read a great article out of the journal Nutrients, if any of you want to go read it. It was published in 2018, lead author Busby, and it's all about gluten and mood disorders. In fact, I think the title is Let's see here, hang with me, we're almost there. Mood disorders and gluten, it's not all in your mind, exclamation mark, a systematic review with meta-analysis. And basically in this article, uh, Dr. Busby and others scoured the research. They basically looked at every article that's been published on gluten, and they were trying to determine, is there a relationship to mood disorders and this protein found in wheat, barley, oats, and rye? And their conclusion is that, yes, there is. Studies vary in terms of sample sizes and how the study was conducted and factors controlled for. And there's always arguments in the literature when there's a, a meta-analysis going on about a certain subject. You know, well, this study was flawed or that study was flawed. And, and that's just common when you're reading scientific articles scientific articles. But with all that being said, when they scoured the literature and they looked, I think they included about 1,099 patients that they felt were from really good studies, their conclusion was that in schizophrenic populations, bipolar populations, major depressive disorder, which is depression, antibodies to gluten are higher than in the normal population. They also found that or they also talked about the relationship to this thing called non-celiac gluten sensitivity, which Kathy and I talked about last week, which is where people eat gluten and they just don't feel well. And when they restrict gluten from their diet, then they tend to feel better. 
and that's referred to as non-celiac gluten sensitivity. And their conclusion was that if you feel better being off of gluten, clearly you should not eat it. And one of the first line approaches for evaluating someone with a mood disorder would be to look at something like a gluten intolerance. Now, are mood disorders complicated? Yes. The neurophysiology of something like depression, going farther, something like bipolar disorder or schizophrenia is very, very complicated. There are many factors that change in the body, many factors that change in the brain, many factors that change with the immune system, neurotransmitters, cortisol, all these factors can be affected for years to decades before somebody even develops an issue. But what they were finding is that there does seem to be an association with gluten because gluten does break down our intestines like I talked about last week. It opens up the intestinal proteins that bind each intestinal cell together, causes them to open. And then when that happens, then pieces of bacteria can flood into the bloodstream, highly inflammatory. And then when that occurs as a result, then inflammation goes throughout the body into the brain. And if you already have a mechanism where your fight flight is not shutting off and you have high cortisol, this may be a precipitating factor for you to then feel even more depressed, less enjoyment with your hobbies and activities. Sleep may be dysregulated not feeling well, crying often, all these things that are associated with depression or other symptoms that may be associated. So that's kind of the information on gluten as it relates to mood disorders. If you have a mood disorder, if you know someone with a mood disorder, this isn't a bad topic to broach with them. I'm not telling you that you have to tell them they have to be gluten-free and I'm not telling any of you that you have to be gluten-free. I just try to get this information out there because the more we do, and especially for those who are very linear, linear and left-brained, they want to see evidence. So you can go read that article out of the journal Nutrients, 2018 lead author Busby, and really look and see for yourself if gluten may be a problem for you and what you're suffering with and maybe why you're not feeling as good as you want to. So Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, going to sign off just a quick video this Saturday morning. We'll be back next Saturday morning with Kathy. Probably will be a little bit earlier, maybe around the 7.30 time slot. And we'll go from there. Thanks, everyone.